Okay, I'm going to call the uh, regular meeting of the City Council to order on the July 11th meeting. Uh, first thing, uh, thing on the agenda, is there anyone that would like to address the council? Any, anyone here or any input from the public? Okay. Uh, then we'll go down to agenda item number five, which is a request from Archtown Main Street. Yeah, represent that. Uh, would you please identify yourself? Sure, I'm Kelsey Lani, and I'm the intern for Barcelona Street. Yeah. So, at least he knows out to speak, so I'm just So, if we have any questions on this request, uh, is it Kelsey, is that correct? Yes. Okay. Can you explain this, this downtown beach bash? Sure. So, we're requesting um, East Lodge from North 3rd Street to before East Street Alley, and then West Lodge from North 3rd to before West. Um, Rest reality will be closed Friday, June the, or July the 21st from 4 to 10 30. Um, and that's going to be for uh, vendors set up and clean up during the event. Um, it's going to be an all day event from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m., but the live entertainment, um, as well as face painting, kids' craft booth, local artist John Walker releasing his summer print, Chrono Ice, photo booth, and much more will start after the street closer. So we're just kind of trying to, uh, instead of just sidewalk sales, we're kind of trying to bring an environment down to downtown Barstown. Um, and we just put a theme with it, the Beach Bash, uh, just to create more of a live atmosphere for people to want to come down and shop local and eat local and enjoy their evening downtown with us. So this is a formal request for the street closure. Any other questions of Kelsey? Uh, I'd like to make a motion to approve the request from Main Street for the closure for the July, Friday, July 21st event. So moved. I have a motion of Councilman Williams. Do I have a second? A second. A second to Councilman Nose. Is there any other discussion? So this is kind of like the third on third extended, basically. Every year they kind of have like their sidewalk sales in July and it's usually from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. The stores are open late and instead of calling it a sell, we want people to be downtown all the time. We don't want them just to wait for the sell in July before they buy their items. So we kind of created a theme with it and made it an event for everyone to want to just come down and be downtown rather than just shopping for the sales. Motion to second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, aye. All opposed, motion carried. Thank you, Kelsey. Thank you, guys. I think your uh, information we have the next item would be the special council meeting on June the 26th. I would like to make a motion. If I'm in order, Mayor, that we approve the minutes by unanimous consent. Okay. For both? For both. Yes. Okay. That'd be the yes, yeah. special meeting on the 26th and then the regular meeting on the 27th. Okay. We'll approve them by acclamation. Thank you. Then there's a finance report for some reimbursements for some council travelers in your information there. There's no action needs to be taken on that. Tim, I'll let you, uh, the next item is a first reading on ordinance uh, regarding local food vendor amendments. Yes, sir. Excuse me. Can we have an introduction first? Please? Oh, yes, please. I'll need a council yeah. to introduce. We need someone to introduce it, whether there be a request for it to be read in its entirety. Thank you. If I'm in order, I'd like to make a motion that we uh, Introduce ordinance B 2017, a mobile food vendor amendment, and have it read in full. Uh, B ordinance B 2017, mobile food vendor amendments, an ordinance amending and adopting is amended. An ordinance regulating the operation of mobile food vendors in the city of Barstown requiring a permit and for other purposes. Whereas the city of Barstown recognizes the need to expand the type of zoning districts which allow use <coughs> by a mobile food vendor 
to include industrial and whereas the need to assess a penalty for violation of any chapter of the mobile food vendor ordinance should be defined now therefore be it ordained by the city of Barstown, Kentucky that chapter 112.31 private property mobile food vending be amended and add a chapter to create a penalty section 112.31 private property mobile food vending except as provided in 112.30 mobile food vendors with a valid statewide mobile food permit or a statewide retail mobile food permit shall only be permitted on private property strike B1 through B5 and LIP add when allowed as an appropriate and as approved permitted accessory or conditional use in the B1, B2, B3, B4, B4, B4 twice, uh, B5 or LIP zoning districts as approved as an approved conditional use for temporary slash transitional use in the I1, I1M, and or I2 zoning districts. Section <coughs> 112.99 penalty add the entire section. Violation of the provisions of this chapter or failure to comply with any of its requirements shall constitute a misdemeanor. Any person who violates this chapter or fails to comply with any of its requirements shall, upon conviction thereof, be found not less than $10 nor more than $500 or imprisoned for not more than 30 days or both in addition and in addition shall pay all costs and expenses involved in the case each day of each day a violation continues shall be considered a separate offense violators of this chapter may be issued a citation by the officer in charge of enforcement in addition or in, in the alternative any person determined to be in violation of this chapter may be assessed civil penalties and fines those fines which may be assessed through the code enforcement board process. Nothing herein contained shall prevent the city from taking any other lawful action as, uh, as necessary to prevent or remedy any violation. All ordinances or parts of ordinances in conflict herewith are repealed to the extent of such conflict. This ordinance shall be in full force and effect following pu publication as required by law. In its first reading, you don't need a vote. Next, we have uh, reports of staff and committees. Anything to report from the Recreation Committee meeting on June 27th? Yes, sir, may I be brief? The council, uh, they all have copies of the minutes. Uh, just to highlight a few things, we talked about extended gym hours. We talked about uh, more use of the COVAC uh, gym, but uh, there's some security issues due to the fact that uh, people that are in the building have access to other parks. We also talked about heat concerns in our gym adjacent to us, and uh, we uh, talked about maybe we need to get a sling psychometer or something so that we stay within the heat index as required. Um, I also talked about uh, looking at some possible <coughs> ventilation possibilities uh, as it relates to that. <coughs> The director said that he would like to uh, take a look at maybe having co-ed volleyball. Uh, we also talked about the, the pool hours and uh, he, he informed us that our fees are compatible to other facilities. And uh, also uh, we talked about uh, feasibility of an indoor swimming facility, but we uh, mentioned how, how it wasn't cost effective. Uh, uh, we do know that there are a number of high school teams that have swimming teams, but there are only maybe four or five high schools in the state of Kentucky that actually have swimming facilities. Uh, we talked about uh, the feasibility of a splash park. Uh, the advantage there is it's an opportunity for us uh, our constituents, their, their, their children, to use that facility, and it doesn't necessarily have to be really supervised, and the water can be recycled, so it shouldn't really cost very much. He also talked about some of the things that we currently do, the summer series concerts, the Halloween party, the dipping dog events. He's looking at a free uh, movie night at the community park, we talked about uh, bathroom facilities at parks. 
the Jones Avenue Park and the Barstown Community Park have restrooms, but the Woodson Rogers Park does not. Uh, as far as some long-term planning, we talked about uh, looking at uh, an indoor multi-purpose facility. Uh, that would be a place where big events could be held, such as uh, concerts and circuses and so forth. Uh, he also said that uh, we would have some fitness uh, capabilities there, maybe a walking track, but this is not done to compete with our local uh, fitness clubs. And so uh, that's pretty much what we uh, talked about and uh, that kind of sums it up, maybe. Uh, Councilman Williams, can I add something uh, in reference to the long-term planning part? Um, also, it was discussed about having multiple basketball courts in there. Oh, in the indoor facility. Yes, yes. in the indoor facility. Yes. And right. assimilated swings such as golf and, and baseball. Um, so there, there were other um, discussions um, added to that conversation. I just want to make sure that, that was known. The basketball was um, one of the things that the community has asked for repeatedly. Thank you for that addition. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Anything from you, uh, Councilman? No, I think you covered it okay. very nicely. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Councilman Williams. Uh, and uh, do we have anything to report? I know we did electric cable yesterday. We had it today. Oh, today. Okay. Yeah, it's 4 o'clock today. Yeah, anything to report on that? Anymore? We don't. Like we got it preferred away. It generates. Some names, okay. And uh, at a cable TV program committee that was held on the 5th. Uh, but that's, that's just for yeah. their review. Yes, sir. The minutes listed are for their review. Okay. Um, anything any council would have on unfinished business that like to bring before tonight? Okay. Under new business, um, we have an appointment for. Uh, Dustin McCoy, uh, that actually could be a three-year term, not a two-year term for the EIBC. Uh, that would be from 7-1-2017 uh, uh, through June 30th, 2020. Uh, all is uh, bio, uh, and I'll need a, a motion for that approval of that appointment. Move to approve. Motion by Councilman Williams and the second. Second by Councilman Buckley, Van, and the second. All in favor, sitting by saying aye. Aye. Uh, All opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Uh, and then, Tim, we have a municipal order regarding mm -hmm. budget updates. Yes, sir. Municipal Order Number M 2017-09, Buttermilk Days 2017, a Municipal Order authorizing the closing of South 3rd Street starting at the entrance of St. Monica's parking lot south to McGee Street on Thursday, August 24, 2017 at noon and reopened on Sunday, August 27, 2017 at 5 p.m. for Buttermilk Days 2017, a no through traffic barricade will be placed at the corner of South Third Street and Payne to facilitate the smooth flow of traffic. There will be no parking allowed on Payne Street on Friday, August 25th, 2017 at noon through Sunday, August 27th, 2017. Okay, thank you, Dan. Okay. Uh, anyone would like to make a motion on the municipal order number M17-09 <coughs> uh, for Buttermilk Days 2017? So moved. The motion by Councilman Buckman. A second. Second. Second by Councilman Douglas. So Any discussion? Okay. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? I'm going to stay. I'd like to stay. Okay. We met with the committee, I think. Let the record reflect Councilman Shackles and stay with me. We have an application to approve for um, mobile food vendor uh, permit. Okay. And we have uh, 
the name of the vendor is Mississippi's, but the owners are the Odoms. I think they're here. Would y'all like to say anything to the council in regards to your application? Well, uh, if I may, Janine, I would like to add, I was told that I needed the um, insurance. And I just wanted to say that the insurance is over $400. So I wanted to kind of get approved before I pay that. And also they said according to their permit, but I can't get the permit until it is set looked at, set up and looked at. I had it before, but I don't, it was a lot of discrepancies. So I just, I got my money back. So now I'm told I needed it again. So, but I can't get it until I set up. Is this, is correct, I know we've been uh, instructing the vendors of application things. So is this, is this a, the, the, the type of permit where they can go from place to place like 10 or 12 or 14 days at a time in one spot and then? Is this it's supposed to be 14. It's 14? Yes. So 14, say you're 14 at the permits that you borrowed in? Then wait 30 days, I want to go back. Or, or go somewhere else. Or move somewhere else. <coughs> for that. I just want to make sure I was clear on that. Yeah, and I guess what you're saying is that you, you haven't submitted all of the things that are required in the permit, like a proof of insurance. I have, I have what she printed me out, proof but it's not paid for because I wanted to at least get accepted or yay nay or whatever before I do that. And is there any other items that have not been submitted other than that? The state permit, yes sir. And then the state permit, I guess, was that I have before be, or after? I have to set up in order for them to inspect. Okay. And I guess you we know, were saying, oh, you can prove it with the condition that you must show as proof of insurance and a proof of the state permit before this is the state actually, health permits you talked about right? yeah. before you can actually get approved for operations right yeah and it would just be approval with contingencies right okay, is there any other questions of, of the owners anything else you'd like to add like to make a motion to approve their request for permit for a mobile food vendor subject to the contingencies uh, required of this permit. So I'll, I'll make a motion if we can be in order, Mayor Heaton, that we approve the mobile vendor's application for Mississippi's, uh, providing they provide the necessary stipulations of state health permit and also uh, liability insurance. I'm sure it's liability insurance. I second. Uh, oh, okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> we have a motion with Councilman Shackles. I have a second with Councilman Copeland. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say what I'm saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you all. Good. Oh, I, I do have one more thing. Uh, about the barbecuing, the amendment, was that before? Or is that going to be with this? I'm not sure what the question is. When you had you had stated before that it was an ordinance that possibly had to be changed in order for us to barbecue outside. No, it wasn't the barbecue. It was the zoning that we discussed tonight when you got here. Okay. okay. So no, there won't be any barbecuing outside. You mean off of your unit? Outside of your unit? Is that what you're asking? Right. No, that's not what the mobile food vendor. It has to be part of the trailer or inside the unit, the barbecue side of it. How is that? And it's part of the zone? Yes. Uh -huh. Well, I mean, I guess, that's, I guess that's one reason why I came. You told me to come for that ordinance. Right. Uh -huh. Well, it doesn't show anything in your, in your application that shows a barbecue unit. Is there a barbecue unit part of this? Well, we have a grill that you, you can't outside. use it inside, right? Right. Well, there's others. Just like last week when the Hall Run Barbecue came, their grill is part of their unit. Right. It's attached to the unit. It's not taken out and put on the street. Well, 
think, if I'm not mistaken, if I'm mistaken, if I'm, mistaken I'm just here reading this ordinance here now. Uh, the uh, the state health department would probably determine if that's uh, if that's the yay or nay. Of a mobile food vendor department. They do it every year at the butter milk days, but they they come by and they they inspect the uh, all the all the vendors, all the food vendors. The state people come through and inspect all the vendors and make sure they're proper. Everything they have is properly set up to be to to serve food. So the, you know, the right. sanitary issues, the uh, the how how you the, if they say it real, it can't be too close to this, it can't be close to that. Right. So they they provide they make sure that all that stuff is they expect all they inspect all the food vendors mm -hmm. and they do the same thing in Burma Festival and everywhere else that we have they, they come it, out. It was inspected before. The permit I brought you before. I never really saw it, but it was yeah. the difference that was explained to me at the health office who issues the state permits is that there's a difference between a 14 day one time one time only pass, which is what you give out for the Burma Festival and for buttermilk days, compared to an actual mobile food vendor unit. unit. Yeah, there's yeah. there's a difference between the yeah, two. I think it's the definition of mobile food vendor unit. Is this something that we can change? Well, I'm just reading the ordinance that says private property mobile food vendor. It's the same thing about you. So I'll give you that. Except as provided in 112.30 mobile food vendors with a valid statewide mobile food unit purpose. Right. Or a statewide retail mobile food unit purpose. Yes, sir. That's the difference. That was explained to me by the health office. We can look at it. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, we can see they, what's required. It'll be their call. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. And so if, you know, if and on the contingencies that you all just talked about, if the state permit is issued, then, then that's fine. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. The necessary. And if there's something in local regulations that's standing in the way, we can look at changing that. If that's right. something for you all to consider. I mean, you know, you don't have to change it. But yeah. You could change it. But the you look and see if something's because, standing Because the state, when they have come by and inspected food vendors, some of them have had to shut down, or some of them have had to do, make some changes in their, in their vendor right. setup, or they couldn't operate. Right. I, I would like to say something. Um, I, I would like to say something to the Odoms. Um, I want to apologize for the confusion. Um, I've heard from you guys several times and I believe that you reached out to Mary Riley as well, but I want to apologize for the confusing, confusing information, the lack of information that you did not receive. So going forward, I hope that um, as a council that um, we can look at that ordinance or what have you and, and make sure that we're able to assist you in the right way or comply with whatever the state health uh, decides. Um, but. Um, it, there was a lot of confusion, and um, I, I hear it again. And uh, you, you did not. I just heard that you did not receive that information once again. So I just, you know, I just want to apologize for that because if I was sitting at that side, I would be frustrated as well. So um, thank you, and thank you for trying to um, be a part of the community and, and give us something new to try. So um, good luck in your endeavor. Thank you. Anything else on this matter? All right. Um, council for comments. Yeah, council for comments. Anybody have anything else that we're waiting for the council this evening? Okay, if not, uh, would you like to prove we have a cemetery needs for Robert Allen, one grave site? Michael Patricia Smith for two grave sites. Prove those by acclamation. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Thank you. And then um, under announcements, uh, Tim said earlier, uh, I will have to be out of town. I'll be in Detroit at a meeting on the 25th, so you all have to uh, elect a 
presiding officer that evening, and then Mr. Butler will also be out that evening. Mr. Kelly will be back that night. He, he's out of town today. So, uh, give you all that heads up. And then, in, uh, in regards to the uh, police department, I'm going to appoint a police department personnel committee this evening to do the search for the new police chief. And that committee will consist of uh, Greg Ashworth, will be the facilitator, and uh, Councilman Kelly will be on that committee, Councilman Williams, uh, HR Director Larry Green, uh, Tim Butler will be a non voting member. He'll be the next official just for legal advice during the process. Uh, Randy Overstreet who is a retired captain of Kentucky State Police. Uh, also was the commander of uh, Post 4 over in Elizabethtown, which included Nelson County. He will serve on that committee. Um, Sharon Shanks, who is the head of the Nelson County Public Library, she will also be on the committee. And then Bubba Wood, who is a retired U.S. Army and is currently the uh, director of <coughs> marketing for the Army Recruiting Command for the United States Army. He will serve on that committee. We will keep the application process open until uh, I think August 1st, and then the committee will convene and, and start the review process. And then uh, also this evening, uh, Mary Riley, who's in the back row, is the mayor's assistant. Uh, she's celebrating five years. Mary previously uh, served as mayor. Sheffield was an uh, assistant and then uh, went over to engineering and now is back uh, serving as a mayor's assistant. So I want to congratulate you on your five year anniversary, Mary. Thank you. Wow. Got anything else to bring before the council? Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor, see what I'm saying, aye. Aye. Uh -huh. All opposed. Two seconds. Two seconds.